Enderforce.com Hi everybody and welcome back to this OpenGL tutorial. In this tutorial we will understand the rotation matrix as an instrument to define the orientation between two different frames. In this slide we can see the OpenGL world frame and another frame attached to an object in this particular case a cube. So, we want to identify the rotation matrix that describe the orientation of this local frame respect to the world frame. By definition, a rotation matrix is a matrix which columns are the components of the local frame's unitary vector expressed respect to the world frame. This unitary vector are D, S and U. So, the rotation matrix from the world frame to the local frame that express the orientation of the local frame respect to the world frame is the following matrix. In OpenGL world, however, we will use the homogeneous coordinates form. It is not important to understand this matrix for now. You can ignore the, the last columns and the last row. Of course, it is difficult to express a particular orientation defining the matrix values directly by hand. Fortunately, we can express every orientation through a composition of three elementary rotation using the Euler angles. So, first let's see what elementary rotation is and then we will compute the Euler rotation matrix. An elementary rotation is one of the following. A rotation of a particular angle around the x, x axis, rotation of a particular angle around the y axis, and rotation of a particular angle around the z axis. We can express every orientation using a composition three elementary rotation. So we can use, for instance, the following Euler matrix. But we remember that the Euler matrix is not unique. There are 12 possible configurations that we can use. OK, we know that we can express every orientation using a three elementary matrix composition. But how we can compute the columns of an elementary matrix? Fortunately, the answer is very easy. We only need to use a trigonometric theorem. Let's see the rotation matrix around the z-axis. In this particular case, we have the world frame and the local frame with the same origin. The local frame rotates around the z-axis by an half angle. So we need to compute the components of the unitary vector along the v-axis and the unitary vector along the s-axis. For the v unitary vector, we have the x component equals to cosine alpha, because the unitary vector has a norm of value 1. The y component is equals to sine alpha. The zeta component is equal to 0, because the v unitary vector is on the x, x, y plane. For the S unitary vector, we have a similar situation. The X component is equal to negative sine alpha, the Y component is equal to cosine alpha, this angle, this angle is equal to this one, and the zeta component again is equal to zero because the s unitary vector is on the e, is on the y x plane finally the u unitary vector has the x and y components equal to zero because the zeta the uh, u unitary vector is along the zeta axis 
so it's perpendicular to the xy plane the only components different to zero is the zeta component equals to the one value so the final rotation matrix around the zeta axis is the following of course using homogeneous coordinates in a similar manner we can compute the other elementary rotation as the following now we are ready to compute the Euler matrix we only to multiply the three elementary rotation matrix and finally we obtain the Euler matrix in the OpenGL program we will use both the elementary rotation matrix and the Euler rotation matrix in order to rotate the cube in uh, the OpenGL world before to see the OpenGL program a final discussion a rotation matrix defines the orientation between two different frames if R is the matrix that describes the orientation of a frame B respect to a frame A this matrix transforms a vector expressed in frame B in a vector expressed in frame A. If the frames A and B have the same origin, the matrix R is also the matrix that transforms points expressed in frame B in points expressed in frame A. An important property of a rotation matrix is that the transpose of a rotation matrix is equal to the inverse of a rotation matrix. OK, we are ready to look at the programming code. The application is more complex than uh, the last one we have seen in the last tutorial. I introduced the vector tree class. It's not mine, but it's very useful class because it uh, allows us to uh, represent uh, a vector in uh, 3D Cartesian space. So I'm scrolling through the code for you in order to understand how the class works. We have different uh, constructor and uh, methods that allows us to that allows us to execute the different operation between two vector compute the length the sum scalar product cross product and so on this is an interesting class of course if you want you can realize uh, the class by yourself but this is out of the scope uh, in my case for this uh, tutorial for this application okay now let's see the main class the main class is more complex respect to the last one we have seen in the last tutorial I introduced uh, different methods like uh, mouse click mouse motion and trackable mapping this method implement uh, the trackable system a trackable system allow us to rotate the wall level so is very useful for this particular demo we have also different draw methods the draw method is the main method every method that draws something in the level is placed within the draw method draw axis draw arrow axis and draw axis are two different methods that allow us to draw three cartesian space frame attached to a particular object on the level or to draw the world frame for the opengl world draw arrow axis uh, draw a 3D Cartesian space using arrow while draw axis it's uh, very simple uses only line to draw a 3 Cartesian space draw box 
is a method that allows us to draw a cube in the level with a particular orientation and the draw grid is very nice because it allows us to draw a grid in the level uh, for instance like uh, the Blender software let's start with the rotate Euler method the method implements the matrix transformation using a simple array if you compare the code what we have seen in the slides it's easy to identify each columns of the rotation matrix defined using Euler angles finally we need to multiply the current active model view transformation matrix with our matrix the use of the Euler method is within the draw method we start drawing the axis of the world frame we go on drawing a grid we need to save the current model view matrix and then apply the rotation matrix defined by the Euler angles we update the angle of the rotation and now we are ready to draw the axis of the local frame attached to the cube and the cube itself the rotation matrix transformation is applied to the local frame attached to the cube and to the cube itself finally we have to restore the model view matrix so let's see the program in action in this case we we will use the rotate Euler method method performing a rotation of a specific angle around the zeta axis let's see the demo Okay, start without the banging. Okay, this is our word. We can set grid, we can use the left mouse button in order to rotate the level. We can use uh, the right button of the mouse for zoom function. We can see the word frame and the locker frame attached to the cube with the same origin of the word frame. We can see the rotation around the blue axis. The blue axis is the Z axis. Now we want to test the rotate Euler method using a rotation around the Y axis. We can see the cube that rotate around the y-axis let's stop the application and we're going on to test the rotation around the x-axis
and good. The cube is rotating around the x axis. Ok, let's stop again the application. Now we want to test the other rotate method, starting from rotate x. Ok, we have the same behavior. Let's stop the application and we test the, rotate, the rotation around the y-axis. Ok, the, rotate, the cube rotates around the y-axis. Finally, we want to test the rotation around the z-axis. And good. The elementary rotation around the z-axis works fine. So we have tested the rotate methods and uh, we are ready to see the whole code so uh, in this way you can able to place the code within your Visual Studio project let's stop the application I'm scrolling the code for you. Ok, the tutorial is completed, see you soon in the next tutorial and thanks for watching!